topic can be described in 10 words, no matter how difficult it may seem to be. Of course, this is very much like, you, you know, it's like on the needle tip, but it's possible. We, we tried it for like now 15 years and it's possible. And the next step would be, uh, say what you want to say and describe it in three minutes. But, you know, of course, first you have to think about what is really the total essence of what you wanted to say or what you want to say. And once that works, I think you can explain everything apart from topics that are beyond the daily experience of people. For example, few, very few physical, very top-notch research topics. They can be very difficult to explain because, like example, speed of light and the problems that are related to speed of light when you move and when you don't move, that's a problem. But stem cells, economy, why we die, why we live, that's all easy. Every scientist can decide for himself or herself if they want to communicate what they do or not. It's totally okay if the scientist is not interested in communicating. Because you become a scientist because you don't like people. You like things. That's why you are a scientist. I mean, natural scientist. Not, of course, not cultural scientist, communication scientist. That's different. But um, So, if you are a schizoid nerd who wants to sit at home and do your stuff or in your laboratory, which is your home then, then that's fine. But if you are... Um, if you are angry that people don't listen to you, and if you are angry that people don't understand what your research is, then you better get out and invest any amount of time that you like to invest into communication, meaning speak in clear words, don't use technical terms ever. Molecule is a technical term, yes. Don't use the term molecule. And um, just try to explain it to your grandma. The urge of me as the natural scientist, criminalist, biologist by heart and my wife, she's a psychologist and the other people whom I know who do a lot of science communication is to explain the things that we like to explain like I said before we want to explain the things because we know that it would be so easy to find out what is objectively true and what you can describe for example when it comes to health what is evidence-based medicine? When it comes to biology, why do we live? Why do we die? All these questions that make a big fuss in religion and in economical problems, they can be answered. And at the same time, there are things that cannot be answered. And that's also what we explain. We explain our, re let's say, a biological point of view. We'll never explain if God can exist or if God cannot exist. So we, we also explain that. We say some things can be you can be explained, some cannot. And we, A typical example would be when you, when you talk to people who believe in esoteric things. It's very easy. You just say, okay, you think you feed from light. Prove it. Just go into a room where there's nothing else except of light. You can have any amount of time, any wavelengths, anything. Just prove it. And then they are like, uh, no, that's not possible because at the same time I need to... Nah, 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 nah. And then they sneak out. And then you're like, okay, see, this is how experiments work. You prove what you try to explain. And f for us, it's interesting, for, for me, for example, because we come from a very low socioeconomic background, and people there had all these totally weird layman's ideas because there was nobody they could talk to. It's not like when you are in an academic environment, you can talk to somebody. But if you don't know any academics, then there's nobody you can resort to. And also, if you read something in a newspaper, how do you find out if that is now true or if it's driven by interest? Religious, cultural, economical interest. So what we do is we try to give people an, an opportunity to apply rules that come from a field that they neglect because they think it's boring and it's cool to neglect it to apply in their daily life. And that's what it boils down to. It's not that we want to explain them the scientific part, but we want to show them that science is sexy because it can help you in your daily life, in your marriage, in your food preparation, in your friendships, in your computer use, in anything. So that
And that's just fun. L like for a kid, if a kid sees something interesting, an interesting stone, goes to mommy and says, look, an interesting stone. So that's what we do. We're like, look, interesting. That's the problem is that since I address people of any economic and socio-economic level, the take-home message can be only very short. So if you are a scientist like many other scientists I know who speak to a very educated crowd, the take-home message is longer. <laughs> so I, I also pay a price for making it more easy. I mean, it seems more easy, but at the same time, I know that after three hours of doing whatever I do, uh, there will be only one sentence left that people will remember on the next day. In contrast to when you talk to, yeah, especially academic people, you can have maybe ten sentences to give people to take home. I don't have a goal. I mean, I think you are under the total misconception that I have like a goal or I want to change the world or I want to make the world a better place or I want something. I don't want anything. I'm like the kid with a little glass stone and it's like, look, it's beautiful. That's all. And it, it, then, like, as all kids know, mom is like, well, whatever. Go back and play. So.